so most welcome welcome back again Most welcome, Miss Wala, again. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. We'll just wait till the number is. Uh... Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, Miss Evan. We are waiting for others to come. Yes, it's okay. I'm waiting with you. Okay, you can start. Okay. Uh, now when it comes to time management, how do you think we should manage time through a virtual classroom? Please share your answers in the chat box. What do we mean by time management? Or how should we do to manage time? Yes, thank you, Ms. Hanan. It all starts with planning. Assigning time for every step. Thanks, Ms. Amani. This helps a lot, by the way. Be ready in advance. Excellent. You know, just like a physical classroom, you can never start a session without being really well prepared. Plan well to have time for every part in the lesson. Yes, thank you so much, Ms. Basma. Okay, so the first type, uh, the first step. <clears throat> that you need to, uh, yes, who's uh, Moonlight? Yes. When I do try to uh, carry out uh, a virtual class with my students online, uh, first uh, I limited the extra time for them. Uh, then uh, I divided my lessons to three phases. Yes, excellent. Uh, I gave every phase of the lesson uh, a limited time to uh, start and uh, end this bit and uh, continue to another part of the lesson. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, um, I range time according to my goals and my lessons. Yes, thank you, Venus. It is. Okay, so... Um, as we said, virtual classroom is a whole new experience for the students. Same so in other classes, you need to start with setting your virtual classroom rules. Because as we said, like for example, in a physical classroom, you would set, you would tell them that eating is uh, is not allowed and running is not allowed and so on. But actually, if they're staying at home, they can still uh, follow the session while eating a sandwich. <laughs> you can't stop them from doing that anymore, right? <laughs> So this is why you need to modify your classroom rules and start 
make them clear from day one. What exactly are, do I expect from my students during the virtual classroom? Okay, like as we said here, all mics are muted until the host allows you or raise your hand if you need to speak and then I'll un unmute your mic and so on. Uh, as you all said, be ready before you start. Well, preparation cannot be avoided. Make your goals and priorities in each session. Now, uh, Miss Moonlight, she said that she divides her lesson into parts and then she allocates a certain time for each lesson and so on. This is very good because on a virtual classroom, because it looks like chatting, we unintentionally would tend to waste time. So if your goals and your priorities in each session is not set from the very beginning, you might get lost. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because as we said, it's just the chatting or you're talking, so you might just get off, get off the points, whether you as a teacher or the students, by the way. So you need to make sure that everything's clear and you have a checklist that everything is going on the right track. Spot and avoid time wasters. What do we mean by time wasters? Like one, number one, unclear objectives. I prepared the lesson, but I don't know exactly what the, my students should learn from this session. Okay. Number two, for example, this organization, whether from you or from the students. This is why, again, planning, planning, planning. You'll hit this word a lot today. Also, miscommunication. Uh, that uh, your mic is not working properly or your students cannot understand you well because the information you saw that you said is not that clear and so on. All those things are time wasters that you need to make sure you avoid uh, during planning and also offer a plan B for everything of them or every problem of them. Set a daily schedule, meaning what? That yes, we all or some, the majority of us here plan a weekly plan, but you need to divide this weekly plan into days to make sure that uh, your goals are achievable, okay? So you do not move to the next day without achieving everything that you have done in this day. Make sure that you estimate a duration for each activity. So for example, I know that this uh, activity would take only three minutes. Estimating time would make it much clearer for you how long your lesson would go, how uh, whether your explanation was too long and the student would get bored. So I need to put more activities. So it's try to estimate the duration, the duration of each activity that you're going, going to do, whether it's pre or during or uh, um, after uh, the explanation part that you are going to offer. Stay on top of your to-do list. Now, this is an advice that I heard from my previous supervisor, and Jazakallah Anni Khair. She, I would always complain that I'm overwhelmed. I have so many things to do and I can't finish them all. And the to-do list never seems to end because you cross something out and then you add tens in, in its place. Stay on top of your to-do list. Try to be accurate, to try to be consistent, to finish everything on time so that you don't pile things up and then you would lose track. You'll simply get lost among the tasks that you need to do. Okay, remember this advice, stay on top of your to-do list. Guard your time. Guard your time. Online sessions can really be tricky, okay? Make sure that you are uh, following the time track correctly. Okay, now let's have a break, okay? I'll show you a word cloud, okay? Like uh, lots of words beside each other. Tell me what was the first word you saw and write it in the chat box, okay? Are you ready? They're all words about classroom management. Are you ready to see the word cloud? If you're ready, please type okay or one in the chat box. Okay, let's see. One, two, three. Write the word. Now type the first word you saw and reflect your working uh, methodology or your teaching way. Ms. Rabob, education. Of course, education, Ms. Rabob. SAT, education. <laughs> Virtual learning, Ms. Amani. Courses. You know, uh, actually, personally speaking, the first word I saw was training. <laughs> so it seems that we attract the words that reflect our personalities one way or the other. 
representation assess content Venus, yes. Implementation. Okay, would someone please uh, unmute themselves and tell me how do you think the word you first saw reflect your personality as a teacher? Venus video, both starts with V. Would someone like to share their experiences? How does the word that you first saw reflect your personality as a teacher? Yes. May Ms. I? Yes, Miss Hasna. Or who is speaking, Miss Rabob? Rabob? Oh. Yes, Miss Rabob. Hello. How are you doing? This is Rabob. Thank I can wait. Of oh, five things. Uh, education, of course, it obsesses me. Like. I'm very worried about my kids' education. I'm very worried about education in uh, in school and uh, for my students. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of uh, education in my head. This yes. is maybe why I, I first spotted it. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, Miss Hasna, you raised yeah, your thanks hand. Thanks a lot. Yes. Welcome, uh, Paul. Welcome, Halal. How are you? Thanks for this uh, fruitful session. Um, thank you so much for joining. Yes, my first word, the first word that I uh, I see was uh, wood paste. Um, actually, from the beginning, I like um, online online teaching. Um, yes. Even even though we, we, we have not this chance to uh, adapt it in our classroom, in our original classroom, because we are because I'm I'm working in a governmental school here here in Egypt. But yes. uh, after coronavirus, and this is one of it's um, uh, advantages that we are um, we are um, able to use uh, online classroom and virtual virtual classroom. Um, actually, I started to uh, as um, <laughs> as a try with my students to uh, through through Zoom. Um, I use a lot of uh, uh, apps such as yes. uh, Zoom. Um, I use a lot of, of games that based on the website like uh, World Wall. Sometimes I, I do some uh, quizzes with, with them and it was uh, really uh, fun for them and gives me uh, the chance to use uh, uh, this online uh, uh, gifts in my teaching. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Ms. Hasna, for sharing your tweet. Okay, let's move on. Now here comes the part about communication tools. Of course, in a virtual classroom, how do I communicate with my students? There are two ways of online communication. The first one is asynchronous, and the second one is synchronous. Asynchronous means that it's happening at different times. So you may be recording the session, or uh, you, you explain the session, you, rec you record it on Zoom or any video application that you have, and then you send it to the student to watch it later. Or synchronous, like the one that we're having now, teacher and students are available at the same time. They are, all, they are both communicating on the same time. Of course, there are some aspects, both of them have like advantages and disadvantages. For asynchronous here, this part would be that it's independable. So it gives the students and even teachers a chance to work at their own pace. You don't have to be present at a certain time, as we said in the virtual office hours. You can just record the session whenever you can, and the students would watch it and follow the material whenever they can. So flexibility here is a very great advantage. Also, it offers the, the teacher a great opportunity of doing uh, many activities to suit different, uh, different abilities of the students. If you're delivering an information in the classroom, yes, you try to differentiate, but maybe in a, uh, in a asynchronous session, you would send one of the students a PDF, but the others you would send them a video. Others would give them a website link so that they search the information for uh, themselves and so on. So you have different tools. You can differentiate the way that you're teaching depending on the needs of each student that you have. Also, it gives you a chance to avoid technical problems because you have a, a, an opportunity to record the session in advance so you can revise it and edit it and change anything that needs to be changed before sending it to the students. Unlike the uh, live sessions in which you can, if you have any technical problem, you wouldn't be able to avoid that. Now, when it comes to synchronous or learning that happens on the same time from teacher and 
students, the greatest advantage, especially for lower grades, is that they made them still feel connected with their teachers. You know how students are always attached to their teachers, especially the ones they love. So if you're delivering a live session, it would be much easier for them to feel comfortable while they're learning. It would also offer you as a teacher a chance to give immediate feedback because you were discussing the listen now I'm sending you a worksheet to answer so I can give you the feedback immediately. And here the feedback would be for all unlike the asynchronous in which you would have to uh, um, review the homework individually for each one of the students. Also, it offers uh, questions in real time. This means that I'm explaining the session now that if students have questions, they can ask it immediately. They don't have to wait for, for later to ask. Maybe they will forget or they will just uh, ignore asking it. But on session live, they usually tend to ask any question that they have. Finally, it uh, fixed or asynchronous classrooms, they usually have uh, fixed timing, so they look like the school routine. So it makes the students at least feel that they are still going to school because they have fixed timing. Like at seven o'clock we start our session and so on. Now, when it comes to uh, here, we're going to have some tips, but let me ask you first. Now, which type of those two uh, communication tools would you prefer as a teacher? Asynchronous or synchronous? Or maybe a mix of both. What do you think is the ideal way? Or which one do you prefer? Thank you, a mix of them. Yes, synchronous, mix, okay. Yeah. Yes. Synchronous, having students live. Yes, actually a mix would be the perfect way that you deliver some materials online, virtually, live with the students, and then some other materials would keep them for later, okay? Both together according to the type of the lesson. Yes, excellent. Now, when it comes to communication, you need to, number one, uh, and again, this is, you might think of it as a repetition, but because it's actually a very important point, you need to make sure that the communication tools you're using are really achieving the educational goals that you have. Do not allow students to use the communication website or application that you're using for teaching, for chatting, or for wasting time. So you need to make sure that they are only using it for learning. Also, make sure that you as a teacher is paying great attention. Do not just say, yes, yes, I'm following. And yet then your eyes are not on the chat box or not on the participations. Maybe stu students will, uh, participants, I mean, maybe students will leave the session and you're not really aware that they're there. Okay, so students need to see and feel that you as a teacher is really paying attention to what you're doing so that they themselves would still be interested and in paying attention as well. You know that we're all our role models to our students. So we need to act the same way that we need them to act. Okay, now make sure that you use all the options that you have in an application or else why did you use it at the beginning? We said at the planning step, Go through all the communication tools that are available and pick, pick the perfect one or pick the one that suits you. Once you, you pick it, make sure that you are just uh, uh, exploiting all the options or the possibilities that you're using. This would be very beneficial for you and for the students because maybe there is an option there that you don't know about and then you'll have to upload another application. Although this option, this possibility is there in the application that you're using, but you didn't really um, look it through or um, uh, know about it before. Try your best to acknowledge each individual. By individuals here, we mean the students because uh, you know, in class, we have group activities and individual activities. If you're going online, we just tend to talk to everyone and then ignore, ignore the personalities. Avoid doing this as a teacher. Communicating with students individually is very important. The least you can do is addressing them by their names, just like what I'm doing now. Excellent, Ms. Basma. Thank you, Ms. Rabob, for participating. Thank you, Ms. Hasna, for replying, and so on. When students hear their name, they get more motivated to work and participate, right? Every student, you know, in physical classroom, students like to be called upon to answer a question. So make sure that when you're communicating in a virtual classroom or in a even asynchronously, that students feel that 
the teacher is really paying much attention to me, me as well as only an individual, not just the group. Make sure again that your students are collaborating together. Great part of the online teaching is happening independently. So you need to teach your students to collaborate together instead of just depending mainly on you. So you may ask them, if someone asks you a question, you might refer him to his friend. Why don't you ask Ahmed? I think he might know. Why don't you check with your friend and see, or let's see if uh, Sarah is following and she knows what we're talking about, okay? This would give you a chance to, for, uh, first of all, to um, get all students involved and would actually give you a break because you don't have to do everything on, uh, on your own because it would not be really a good part of a teacher be, to be dominant in a session. Now, when it comes to content and resources management, we covered some of this in the introduction that you need, first of all, to be up to date. Make sure that the resources you're using are uh, developed. For example, we, need, we said that we need to have a new uh, medium to share the um, worksheets or the files with our students. Personally, I was depending on WhatsApp, but what's the point or the disadvantage of WhatsApp? It really exhausts the mobile memory, right? So later at the end of the year, I started sharing my documents through Google Drive. Other teachers would use Google, Drive, uh, Google Classroom and so on. Be up to date because technology needs you always to follow what's in you to make it much easier for you to do your job as a teacher. <clears throat> make sure that the activities that you use are still um, uh, applying the active learning strategies. Okay, not just because we're going virtual, I'm going to record the video and send it to the students and that's it. Where is your part as a teacher? In making the students active participants, right? So you might, for example, explain the lesson and the homework could be for the students to record a video of themselves explaining the same point back to you again, or doing an activity or making an, uh, a project that uh, shows that they understood it well. Focus on content mastery, meaning what's here? That do not just follow the students because, okay, they are on task, they submitted the homework, good for them. No, make sure that they mastered all the content that you delivered during this session, the whole lesson, not just one question. Not because a student answered the question, now they mastered all the session or all the content. Again, reserve all classroom materials. This is repeated because it's very important when it comes to resources and, uh, to resources and content. Uh, for me, as a teacher, uh, I used to make a separate folder for every classroom I teach on my, on my laptop. And I don't need an application for that. Just create a folder with the name of the classroom that you teach. This is grade 10, this is grade 12, this is for activities, this is for broadcast, and so on. Being well organized with folders, dividing the folders into even subfolders. For example, for grade 10, I was teaching them language arts and social studies. I would, make two, I would make two separate folders for that as well. And start adding the materials of the lesson or the worksheets that you have. Give them clear titles so that you can find them easily later. You know that when we download resources from the internet, they usually have like mixed numbers and letters. Do not just save it with the same title that you have it on the, or, or, that you got it with from the internet. Change it, rename it so that it's clearer for you to find it later. Okay? Do a list of links that might be uh, useful for their students. It can be supplementary for them. It can be uh, enrichment activities. Do not just depend, again, independent learning, independent learning. Do not just tell the students, okay, that I told you everything and just go do the homework. And instead of giving them a homework, give them a link. Link would allow them to research, would allow them to see more information and then come back to you with tons and tons of things to share with their friends, okay? Now here comes the assessment. How do you think we assess our students in a virtual classroom? Do we still give them an, an exam to answer? Yeah, let's take your paper and give it back to me in 10 minutes. Quizzes, yes, good application. Thank you, Ms. Amani, website. How do you assess your students virtually if you, if you have done online teaching before? Formative assessment techniques, okay. Riddles, thank you, Mr. Abdul Wahab. 
Kahoot, yes, Miss Amani, I use it a lot. Role play, okay. Breakout rooms, excellent option, by the way. I love it in Zoom. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is find a digital assessment app. Because now, again, everything is going virtually. You need to have a soft copy of everything. So how am I going to assess my students' understanding? I can't send them the quiz paper or the test papers. You need to find a digital tool uh, to make sure that it works like an, an exam. It can be uh, Google Forms, it can be quizzes or Quizlet or Kahoot or uh, online puzzles. There are lots of that. So find a digital assessment app that would suit you and also that is fun for students to do and then it would make it much easier for you. Good point about having digital assessments is that most of them or actually all of them are automatically corrected. So it saves you lots of time when it comes to correcting uh, or giving feedback to the students. Number two, make sure that the assessment you're giving is reflective uh, and thoughtful, is, is asking them to give you reflective and thoughtful responses. Meaning what? Avoid giving them memorization homeworks or uh, copy this lesson the way that we were used to have our homeworks back in the 80s <laughs> or the 90s. This wouldn't work anymore. Give them something, something to encourage them to be crit critical thinkers. Okay, so when you give them a task, as again, they can do it through research, they can do it through asking their parents or uh, asking another teacher, maybe uh, you're teaching language arts, but they can go ask a, sci uh, a science teacher and so on. Ongoing assessment, make sure that you are assessing your students all the time. If it's a virtual classroom, keep asking them all through the session, okay? If it's uh, not, uh, if it's asynchronous and you're, they're not live with you, make sure that you send the video and then you send them a question with the video. Watch this video to answer this question. I'm waiting for replies, okay? Do not just send the video and say, okay, go watch this. They wouldn't watch it. And even they watch it, they're going to be doing it for fun, just like watching any movie. What's the purpose of watching this? Okay. Allow them sufficient time to submit the quizzes, the answer, the or the assessment that you're asking me, uh, them to submit, whether it's an assessment or uh, a homework. Here is one of the important parts. Consider and depend on CCQs. What are CCQs? Concept checking questions. So during the session, once you've explained a part, do not simply ask, do you understand? How will they reply in this case? Yes, we all understand. But then you, you come, you're really shocked that they didn't understand anything. Do you understand? They will automatically say yes, whether they understood or not. So what do I do? I change the form of the question. Instead of saying, do I understand? You ask them about information and information that you said in the session. Like now, for example, how many communication tools do we have? Who remembers? And thank you, Ms. Amani, use why, what, and where, and so on. How many communication tools, how many types of communication uh, do, we, do we have? We said there are many two types of communication, synchronous and asynchronous, okay? And then we see uh, um, the other tools that you can use whether online or, yes, Ms. Amani, thank you, only two. Okay, here comes the last part of this uh, um, workshop about the netiquette. Does this word look familiar? Work on prefixes and suffixes. It looks similar to something else. Yes, Ms. Basma. Yes, it is etiquette. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Basma. Etiquette is coming from the word etiquette. Only the N is, is uh, added because net, you're using it through the internet. So netiquette, the etiquette that you should follow when you are online. This is why, netiquette, okay? Number one, respect each other's viewpoint. You have, this is for the students, of course, okay? Those are the rules that you should uh, tell for your students that they should respect each other's points of view. And of course we do this in a virtual, in a physical classroom as well, but it needs to be more stressed in a virtual classroom. Number two, you need to tell the, your students to wait to be recognized to speak. At the beginning of every session,
be enough. Also, it would be more, very beneficial if you, you created chat codes. You know, chatting sometimes takes a while to write every word that you want and so on. So you might create a code with your students. For example, if you have a question, just type a question mark. If you don't understand a part, just type an exclamation mark. If you wrote something and you're still going to add more, write three dots right beside each other and so on if you are following right okay some people uh, some presenters would replace the okay with number one type one if you're listening type one of your following and so on so create this chatting code with your friend with your students to minimize the chatting time and wasting time on writing so much now here in the conclusion i really hope first of all that you enjoyed the session but at the end let me remind you of something that effective teaching can never happen except from an effective teacher and they say that the five habits of uh, effective teachers are the five that you can see on the screen now. Number one, enjoy teaching. If you don't love it, you would not be able to do it properly, okay? Number two, embrace change. Be able to improve yourself. Technology is overcoming everything nowadays. Spread positivities, okay? Always be positive about what's coming next. Find inspiration, stick to people who inspire you and teach you something new. Do not skip, stick to people who are going to tell you that it's very difficult and virtual classroom are ineffective and so on. Stick with people, positive people, okay? And finally, make a difference, which is the game and uh, the aim of all of us as teachers that we're trying to make a difference in our students' life, okay? Uh, I really hope that uh, you enjoyed our uh, presentation today. <clears throat> Let me just clear what's on the screen. Now it's th it's time for uh, feedback. Your feed, oh, the presentation is not working. Yes, now it's time for question and answer. We have five minutes for question. If you have any question, please uh, type it in the chat box. For feedback, I would ask you uh, to fill the uh, Padlet yeah, this is a good communication way, by the way, that you can do with your students. I'll type a link in the chat box now here. This is the link to my Padlet. Please click the link and write something on the on my wall as a feedback or a question that you have. And I'm going to share it now with everyone on the screen. Uh, Rosa needs to see the Netigate slide. OK, Rosa. Here you go, dear. I'm waiting for your feedback on the uh, Padlet, okay? It's on. Can you see the Padlet now? Yes. yes. Ms. Rosa, do you have any question about the AT, uh, Netigates? Ms. Rosa, I'm waiting for a question, if you have any. I'm waiting for your questions, if you have any questions. And also, you can, if you don't have any questions, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for Amani, for Ms. Amani, for this great opportunity. Relu Azhar, thank you so much for sponsoring such a great events for all teachers to benefit. Uh, Please, I, uh, I'm waiting for your feedback on the Padlet so that I can improve my presentations and work on what needs to be improved and modified for next presentations, inshallah. Thank uh, you so much. Really, we would like to thank you um, very much. You are so informative and your session was so fruitful. We enjoyed it very, very, very much. Uh, really, thanks for your great efforts and your uh, uh, great experience in presentation. Really, we learned a lot from, from you. Uh, yeah, and sure. we hope that everybody uh, write on Padlet. I uh, think some people wrote uh, something here. Write down your name if you're, if you're ready and uh, share yeah. your idea. You can write your name in the title instead of anonymous if you'd like to. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. It was a great experience, and I'm glad you all liked it. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, uh, and uh, also, we, you can find the, the recording in the, 
uh, the material uh, via our uh, platform and our uh, YouTube channel. Okay. Yes. Uh, so you ha you have a lot of uh, bedlet here. You can see, as you can see, yes. you can see your yes. answers, your uh, opinions, and really you deserve. Thanks, mm -hmm. Ms. Wale, for uh, giving us mm -hmm. such an informative session. Uh, really, really interesting and awesome. Thank you so much. I'm typing my email in the chat box for anyone who would need it for any further information, or I would be happy to help. Yes. Thanks, Ms. Wale, for everything you do for us. Um, Ms. Amani, would you add the links uh, for our platform and uh, the yes. YouTube channel in the chat box yes. for yes. them to save if you'd like to? Yes, for sure. Yes. We're so glad we have you today and stay tuned for our upcoming sessions, inshallah, on the Al Azhar platform. Yes. And we are so proud of having you as our presenter today. Thank you so much. The pleasure is all mine. Here are the links for uh, the Real Azhar Mentors platform and also the YouTube channel. You can join and you can enjoy our session today and our previous sessions plus our materials you need. All what you need, you will find it there. Fantastic. I can see that uh, a lot of people are sharing their opinions and they feel free. Yeah. You might also share something that you've learned from today's session if you'd like to. Something that was new for you, something uh, that you remembered. Uh, um, uh, something that you would up like to apply in your uh, uh, coming, inshallah, online sessions since uh, most probably we're all coming back online, right? Like here in Saudi Arabia, it's online for seven weeks. The first seven weeks of the school year are going to be online. Okay, may Allah be you. Okay. Um, yes. Have you? Thank have you. you th thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wale. And thank you, everybody, for coming today and for your opinion. And uh, if you need anything, just uh, send, don't, don't, feel free to send us emails for our uh, platform and uh, we will yes. already answer and reply for you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and uh, if you need to, to tell them something, Mrs. Wala. No, thank you so much, Ms. Amani. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much for attending. Wait for our next uh, workshops, inshallah. We'd hope to see you all again and again and again. Thank you inshallah. so much. Okay. Bye -bye.